Okay, today I'm going to talk about a nutrient that has often been suggested for athletes and bodybuilders as a way of increasing exercise efficiency and as a possible ergogenic aid. And that particular nutrient that I'm referring to is called coenzyme Q10. Another name for coenzyme Q10 is ubiquinone. The reason why it's called ubiquinone, it's taken from the word ubiquitous. Ubiquitous refers to, it literally defined as found everywhere. And that's basically a good way to describe coenzyme Q10. It exists in every cell in the body. I'll tell you why in a minute. But it's also found in a lot of foods, particularly protein foods, meat, fish, eggs, uh, less, to a lesser extent dairy, uh, which raises the question right off the bat, why would I need to take a nutrient that seems to be found everywhere. And uh, as this video continues, you'll understand why some people suggest it. But let's talk about what it does. Uh, it's basically a vitamin-like compound. It's not considered essential in human nutrition because it can be made in the body, in the liver, from the amino acid L-tyrosine. However, as you get older, especially past 40, you become less efficient at producing coenzyme Q10. Now, I should also mention there's a whole bunch of Q10, uh, uh, of coenzyme Qs in various animals with different numbers, co coenzyme 2, 3, 4, 7, and all so on. The most active form in humans is the coenzyme Q10. Again, as you get older, you, you produce less coenzyme Q10 in the liver from tyrosine. Now, why would uh, you want to be, why would you, you be interested in using Q10 if you're a bodybuilder or an athlete? Well, let's, we have to understand what coenzyme Q10 does. It's basically, the, ba the most basic way of describing it, it's involved in energy production. The most elemental form of energy produced in the body is called ATP, which stands for adenosine triphosphate. Adenosine triphosphate is manufactured in a portion of the cells called the mitochondria. These are cigar-shaped organelles found in every cell. The mitochondria are the powerhouses of the cell. When the mitochondria die out, the cell that, it, uh, that, it's, that it's found in basically dies. It's like your energy supply is cut off, so the cell basically goes into a system. It's not something called apoptosis. It commits suicide. Uh, on a long-range basis, this could lead to aging of cells. In fact, one of the leading uh, uh, theories of the aging process is a gradual loss of mitochondria with age. Now, if you're a bodybuilder athlete, you should be especially concerned with mitochondria because mitochondrial loss is one of the major causes of muscle loss with age. Besides the hormonal factors like lower testosterone and growth hormone, you, you tend to lose mitochondria with age. And as the mitochondria die out in muscles, the muscles also disappear or atrophy. It's a condition called sarcopenia. There's many reasons for sarcopenia. Um, way too complex to talk about in a video. I will be having an in-depth article on sarcopenia in my Applied Metabolics newsletter. But let's get back to coenzyme Q10. What does it do? In the mitochondria, the, eight, the coenzyme Q10 works in a, uh, uh, a system called the electron transport chain. And, uh, coenzyme Q10, without getting overly technical, it helps to pass electrons through this electron transport chain, which eventually results in the production of ATP. So again, the, the basic function of coenzyme Q10 is that it's involved in the production, production of ATP, which is extremely important. I mean, you know, that's your basic energy. That's what keeps your cells alive. Uh, coenzyme Q10 also functions as an antioxidant. And, uh, if, and if, it, if you can get enough coenzyme Q10 in the mitochondria, it'll help protect the mitochondria because, you know, when you in the process of producing ATP, the byproducts of oxygen metabolism called free radicals build up. And unfortunately, they actually tend to, do, to cause damage to the mitochondria. So you need antioxidants in the mitochondria to actually protect the mitochondria. And coenzyme Q10 is thought to do this. Uh, now, the thing is, it's a big debate among scientists and nutritionists as to whether anybody should even take coenzyme Q10. But there are certain populations where it actually has been shown to be of tremendous benefit. For example, if you've had a heart attack, 
The studies show that coenzyme Q10 seems to help to prevent further heart attacks. And one reason it does this is because most of your cholesterol is carried in the blood in a pro with a, 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 attached to a protein called low-density lipoprotein. Unfortunately, when low-density, I'm going to call it LDL, when LDL gets oxidized, it tends to kind of stick in your arteries and build up, and this causes atherosclerosis. Now, it turns out coenzyme Q10 can attach to the L circulating LDL and prevent its oxidation. And this is one of the reasons why, if you've had a, a heart attack, if you, if you uh, maintain a pretty good blood supply of Q10, uh, it, it'll help pre prevent uh, another heart attack. Now, if you're doing a lot of stupid things like you know, eating a lot of junk foods, not exercising and all that, you could take all the Q10 you want in the world. It's not going to help you. You're still going to get another heart attack if you follow a stupid lifestyle. But Q Q10 will help if you eat smart and exercise and so on and so forth. Another definite indication for coenzyme Q10 is if you let's uh, okay let's say that same population or let's say that you're you're you go to your doctor and your uh, blood tests show that you're high and you have high cholesterol and uh, high LDL. There's a good uh, the odds are good that your doctor is going to prescribe statin drugs for you. They're called statin drugs. Statin drugs work by inhibiting an enzyme in the liver that produces cholesterol. Uh, there's a lot of controversy about statin drugs. I'm not going to get into that here, but one of the main side effects of statin drugs is it causes a muscle injury, and it tends to produce muscle weakness, and it delays muscle recovery. And one of the reasons why they think it does this is because cholesterol is produced in the liver in a pathway called the mevenolate pathway, and it turns out that same pathway also produces coins of Q10. So if you take a drug like a statin drug, It'll block the production of cholesterol, but unfortunately also blocks the natural production of coenzyme Q10 in your liver. And as a result, your body tends to produce way too little coenzyme Q10. So what happens is when you exercise, the oxidation tends to build up more than usual and it causes more muscle damage than usual. So the antidote, according to some scientists, is, is that people who aren't stat drugs should definitely use a coenzyme Q10 supplement. Uh, the usual dose recommended is between 100 and 200 milligrams. Uh, another possible med medical indication is Parkinson's disease. I just met a, uh, read a medical report indicating that Parkinson's disease is on the rise. Parkinson's disease is a neurodegenerative disease caused by the destruction in the brain of cells in the portion of the brain called the substantia nigra. Uh, these particular cells produce a neurotransmitter called dopamine. Uh, and and uh, the main cause, they think, is two causes of Parkinson's. One is exposure to toxic chemicals. The other uh, is extreme oxidation effects uh, in the brain caused by an accumulation of, of uh, free iron and free copper. Well, it turns out that coenzyme Q10, because of its antioxidant action, can kind of protect you against the oxidant effects in the brain that cause Parkinson's disease. Uh, you'd have to take a larger dose for that. You'd have to take at least 300 milligrams a day. Uh, now, what else do you need to know about uh, coenzyme Q10? As I said, your body produces less. It's found mainly in the uh, protein foods. Uh, as I said, you know, beef, liver, chicken, that kind of stuff. Um, now, as far as from the athletic perspective, uh, you know, because of the fact that Coenzyme Q10 is involved in energy production, and because of its antioxidant actions, it was thought that it could be possibly a good ergogenic aid, and a number of studies over the years have tested this. In one study, they gave skiers, again, a dose of 300 milligrams of coenzyme Q10, and noted an improvement in oxygen delivery and endurance in the skiers. In another study, they gave the same dose of coenzyme Q10, 300 milligrams, to martial artists, and they notice definitely increased muscle recovery, as indicated by a lower uh, uh, production of what they call lipid oxides and also a uh, creatine kinase. Creatine kinase, creatine kinase is an enzyme released in large amounts in the muscle when the muscle is damaged. <clears throat> and when they gave Q10 to the martial artists, they showed less uh, creatine kinase, less lipid oxides, which indicates greater muscle recovery. So there's a good chance that coenzyme Q10 might increase your muscle recovery. 
However, I should also point out the majority of studies that have provided Q Q10 to people that are working out or athletes have shown very little effect. And these dosages usually range from 60 to 150 milligrams. Now, why do, did most of these studies show no effects? There's a simple reason to explain, in my opinion. Coenzyme Q10 is one of the harder nutrients to absorb. It's very, very difficult to absorb Q10 orally. Now, Q10 is a fat-soluble nutrient. If you don't take Q10 with a meal that contains a good amount of fat, the Q10 is not going to be absorbed. Even if you do consume it with a meal containing fat, a lot of it is not absorbed. My feeling is that those studies uh, of athletes and bodybuilders where they gave them Q10 and showed no effect, it's because it, I, I think what happened is that not enough Q10 was absorbed, so not enough got into the mitochondria to actually produce any kind of ergogenic effect. In other words, they just didn't absorb enough to cause an effect. Now, what can you do about this? There are some forms of uh, coenzyme Q10 that are, uh, there's one form that has is uh, both lipid and water soluble. Uh, the, again, there's various forms that, that have been, uh, there's also what they call nanotechnology Q10, where the Q10 is uh, made into very small particles, which makes it easier to absorb. Now, these forms of Q10 are a little bit more expensive than normal, but according to some studies, they're absorbed much greater than normal. There's still another form of Q10 that has actually been developed directly as a mitochondrial protector. It's called MitoQ. Uh, I'm not trying to sell this stuff. I have nothing to do with it. And, and I, I, quite frankly, MitoQ is very expensive, very expensive. But there's been a couple of studies that show that this is one of the few forms of Q10 that gets very well absorbed into the mitochondria. And in animals, it actually showed anti-aging effects. Uh, topical forms of Q10, when they're applied, when they're applied to the skin, they actually show tremendous skin protective and anti-aging effects, which is thought to, again due to the uh, to the antioxidant effect of uh, Q10. Uh, if you give Q10 to men that are infertile, uh, it increases uh, the uh, especially if you give it with carnitine. Combination of carnitine and, and Q10 increases sperm motility. And in some cases, it actually cured infertile men and allowed them to, uh, with their wives, to conceive children. Um, again, a little trick, grapefruit juice can alter certain enzymes in the body. Uh, they're called, basically, I don't want to get into uh, chemistry, they're called P-glycoprotein inhibitors. But anyway, the point is that if you drink grapefruit juice, you can actually increase by Q10 uptake a little bit. It makes it a little easier to absorb. Um, you know, uh, what else can I tell you about Q10? Uh, basically, I think that's a, that's about it about Q10. Uh, you know, it's uh, pretty safe. Uh, you know, large amounts. Some people get nausea if they take too much loss of appetite. Very rare. Uh, I can tell you that I've taken. Um, oh, there's another indication for Q10. Uh, a disease called fibromyalgia which is uh, marked by pain uh, in various, what they call trigger points all over the body, much more common in women. Uh, I actually wrote the first layman's article on fibromyalgia and muscle and fitness about nearly 30 years ago. But anyway, the point is, uh, it's, it's basically, it's kind of a mysterious disease. It, it causes a lot of pain throughout the body. And uh, they, they, for some reason, uh, they, it has something to do with lower energy availability. So if you give co coins and Q10 to people that have fibromyalgia, they very often feel a lot better. Uh, now, uh, I think that's about it for coins and Q10. Uh, uh, I, I've used it myself for a number of years. Uh, I take a form. I get it. Uh, I bought actually buy it at Costco. Uh, it's a form that contains. Uh, it's both lipid and water soluble. I don't remember the brand name or I tell you, but I'm not trying to sell it anyway. But the point is, uh, I myself, I take between 100 and 300 milligrams a day at Q10. Uh, I, I take it again because of its effect. Um, hopefully, it'll cause a little protection of my mitochondria. And uh, also, uh, I, uh, the antioxidant effect. Uh, and one note about the antioxidant effect, very important. Don't take, if you do, if you do decide to take coenzyme Q10, don't take it before you work out or right after you work out because coenzyme Q10 is a potent antioxidant. And some recent research, which I'll be writing about in my Applied Metabolics newsletter, 
indicates that if you take antioxidants just prior to training or right after training, it can, act, it can actually interfere with muscle recovery and even muscle growth because those same free radicals, the byproducts of oxygen metabolism that can actually cause sore muscles and delayed muscle recovery, also right, at, right, right after workout have a beneficial effect of acting as signaling factors in, in inducing, for example, increased insulin sensitivity, and also it's acting as a signaling for anabolic uh, effects in muscle. So you don't want to take antioxidants, including uh, coenzyme Q10, right before or right after the workout. You want to wait probably about two hours. And again, always, always take coenzyme Q10 with fat. Even the, even the fats are the one that's supposedly water-soluble. I still think it should be taken with a source of fat because Corns MQ10 is extremely hard to absorb. So uh, that's about it uh, for Corns MQ10. Uh, you know, you might want to try it. I mean, especially, oh, one thing I keep forgetting. I, I'm sorry I keep interjecting here, but there's two forms of uh, Corns MQ10, basically. One of them is called ubiquinone. The other one's ubiquinol. Now, ubiquinol is the reduced form of coenzyme Q10. 90% of the Q10 that circulates in the blood circulates as ubiquinol. And some studies have shown that it's seven times more absorbable than ubiquinol. When you usually buy a Q10, it's usually in the ubiquinone form. And when you, when you, when you ingest ubiquinol, it's converted in, I think it's in the liver, it's converted in the liver into ubiquinol, and then it gets into the blood. But you might recall earlier I said that people over 40 produce less ubiquinol or less Q10. As a consequence, you want to take a form of, ubi of Q10 that is easily more easily absorbed. So if you're over 40, I would recommend taking the ubiquinol form of Q10. Uh, so it's a, a slightly more expensive, but again, it's seven times greater absorption under all conditions. So that's about it for Q10. If you want more information about nutrition, exercise science, har hormonal therapy, fat loss techniques that work, anti-aging research, ergogenic aids, subscribe today to my Applied Metabolics newsletter, www.appliedmetabolics.com. I have some fantastic articles coming up. Uh, at, uh, for example, I'm going to talk about, let's say you want to be a vegan bodybuilder. I'm going to tell you all the perils and pitfalls and, and how to how you could possibly build muscle while being a vegan. That's just one of the articles. And I, I have many more articles. Uh, uh, tremendous. I mean, you won't find this anywhere. You won't find it on any website. You won't find it in any blog. You won't find this in the magazines. It's only available at Applied Metabolics. I I, I, I have over 55 years of, of uh empirical knowledge and experience and also studying. It's all incorporated in my Applied Metabolics newsletter. I'll save you a lot of money on uh, you know, veering you away from supplements that don't work, telling you which supplements do work, ways to increase your testosterone. All of this is covered in my Applied Metabolics newsletter. So subscribe today. If you want to have the best friend you'll ever have, go to your local shelter, adopt a dog. Greatest creatures on earth, no doubt about it. Take care.